Welcome into Weld.com everyone. On today's episode, we're gonna be doing a little bit of light fabrication as well as speaking on some safety topics, especially when it comes to heat exhaustion. Let's talk about it. Now here on today's episode of Weld.com, we're gonna get a little bit serious and it's gonna be a little bit different. We are gonna do some welding and fabrication, but we wanna talk more about the safety hazard that is heat exhaustion. Especially down here in Houston, Texas, it gets hot. You've seen me in this shop and it gets freaking hot in here, guys. And heat exhaustion is no joke. It's probably the most common injury or common thing that I've seen on most job sites that I've been on. It's basically the body's inability to cool itself, loss of electrolytes, dehydration, the whole nine yards. And it could cause a whole lot of problems for you personally, including all the way up to heat stroke and maybe even death. And that's the subject that we're gonna be talking about today. If you didn't know, June is safety month, so I feel like it's important that we talk about that. And at the same time, I'm gonna be installing this Mr. Cool Mini Split unit. This is a 12K unit. It is a DIY system. Now, I'm not an electrician, an HVAC guy, or none of that but I am a welder who is tired of sweating my butt off in my shop we've got the mini split system that goes on the inside the big piece that goes on the outside I know I'm gonna have to find a place a location in here well that's probably gonna be step one is figuring out where I'm gonna start it's just right off the rip pretty intimidating for me I have no idea what I'm looking at I do know that this is a 12,000 BTU unit I picked it because it covers a single zone aka the shop and my shop is roughly 250 square feet and this is a 500 square foot unit my shop's not finished yet which means i don't have insulation i wanted to definitely see if i can get this done make sure the shop was properly sealed i don't know i felt like it was easier so i could see all the studs because i'm not a carpenter i'm not an hvac i'm not an electrician i really am a real diyer except for when it comes to welding which it looks like from what i've seen this is a lot of literature the biggest one is the installation guide which is super intimidating but just like i think a welding blueprint you really just got to break it up one step at a time so the first step is going to be installing not this big guy but the inside unit right here and it comes with this template so we've got to pick a location in the shop i'm probably going to go for that back corner and then we're going to be using this template so let's start by cleaning out a spot in that corner looks like i'm gonna have to make some room in here this cord's all in the way oh yeah i broke that whatever that is this is where i want it how do i get out of here need some water the first steps they weren't all that bad. Just trying to decipher the hieroglyphics here on page 15 kind of gives you the step-by-step -step of what you gotta be doing. Putting up the bracket, putting the hole in, doing some taping, it doesn't give you a whole lot, but if you keep flipping, it gives you the step-by-step -step here. Starting off with the template and unscrewing the backside of the wall mount off the actual inside unit, or we could pull it off. Now, I don't have a finished shop. I don't have any drywall in here, so really this template's good for marking and laying out the holes. Of course, you're gonna need a stud finder. I can see the studs clear as day. Just toss the template away because I really didn't need it. I'm still going to hang on to it for maybe whenever I do decide to finish the walls in here. I might build around the AC unit. I don't know exactly. But we want to make sure that you have that bracket level. I wasn't really stoked on the screws that came with it. They seemed to strip really easy, which was very frustrating. We got the wall mount mounted and then we just needed to get the right size hole saw for the hole that we needed to drill. Now again, I didn't use the template, really much just kind of eyeballed things. Got that hole in there really easily and then put the little protective cuff, which didn't really exactly fall in that great. I gotta say guys, we're just getting started and I'm already working up a huge sweat. That being said, a couple of things that you're gonna be doing while you're doing any type of work. Try to start in the early morning. I started as early as I could when I got out here and of course staying hydrated. Drinking water is going to be like step numero uno. There shouldn't be any point in opportunity where you're like, oh, I got to keep working. I can't drink any water. No, if you think that, you need to stop and drink some water, just like I am now. We got the leads running on the outside of it now. So now we got to check out the old outside of the shop. It's sitting in the sun a little bit. That should be fun. All right, so we got everything poking out the back here. This is where everything's going to go. <laughs> Good golly, it's a tree growing right there. What is that? Got this is the tube for my ventilation. Very primitive. I didn't know y'all were gonna see some landscaping today too. Screw that. Ah, I need my water. All right, so the next thing it's asked me to do is to screw this guy on. This is all copper, so we wanna be 
a little bit delicate about how we go about unfolding it. And I'm really not gonna unscrew much more than I need. I'll peel apart these two pieces here. And it's color coded, so I'm just gonna get them a couple threads on them for now. I'll spread them apart just a little bit for now while I get them sorted out. Get them as finger tight as possible. Getting some weight off the threads helps. And then we need to grab a couple crescent wrenches to get them tight. We're gonna just tighten these things down to they're snug. We don't wanna over tighten them. We want them to be tight because we don't want them to leak. I just know in my line of work with welding, you don't necessarily need to put the put the German on it. By that I mean guten tight. You just gotta get it snug. Working out in the sun is a is a good easy way to get heat exhaustion. If you want to do anything you can to keep yourself shaded, you'll see a lot of people that work outside. They'll wear long sleeves and they'll stay covered up. And really, at the end of the day, your sweat's kind of your best friend. You start sweating through your shirts and your long sleeve shirts and everything, and you start getting a little cooler because your sweat's keeping you cool. Now I'm working out in the sun now. I just got to be mindful of that. No, I'm losing electrolytes. I'm getting dehydrated, you know? Common side effects, you might get dizzy, you might get a stomach ache, you might get a headache, you might start just feeling a little nauseous, just not thinking straight. A lot of things can start happening to you as you start falling a victim of heat exhaustion. We're gonna have to wrap them with this insulation next. Once those are nice and insulated, uh, then it's asking me to put the other layer of insulation on and tape everything up, get everything at least tightened up to this point, get these points together before we can do any of that i want to hook everything up and leak test stuff but i've got to get something for this unit to sit on now if you look on the ground here i got some tubing it's already painted this is tubing from an old hammock that the hammock kind of fell apart and you know metal's still good it's painted metal so we're going to build a little stand for us uh, so that we can mount that unit somewhere in this area a little higher so if i have to work on it i'm not working on it on the ground maybe work on it like waist high now building this stand, the first thing we're going to have to do is start pulling a little measurements off the condenser unit itself. The legs on the old hammock have two different directions that go up. One's at an angle, so we're going to use this and go ahead and cut off one of each of these little stubs on the legs here so that we have one that's just facing straight up. Once those two pieces are cut, I can put these two vertical pieces on or at least see about where I want the height to be. A little bit higher than waist level, so I don't have to bend over if I have to work on anything. But once we get those pieces cut to length, we can kind of start seeing how I want everything to be as far as the base and this cross member. I'm just eyeballing everything. I really am a big fan of eyeball fabrication. This unit isn't very heavy, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and cut the cross member here and then notch it as well using a cutoff wheel to kind of cut the majority of the meat off of it and then come in with a cone rock to clean everything up usually when you do a bunch of eyeballing you're probably going to want to mig weld something because they're going to have some hellacious gaps but today we're going to crank up the laser welder mainly so i can get a lot of this stuff cleaned up we have a lot of paint and rust on these hammock pieces so i'm going to do the laser cleaning bit you want to make sure you have your laser safe ppe on when doing this but it really does just vaporize rust and paint it's a very satisfying process to watch. I will say out of all the welding experience I have, I am shite when it comes to laser welding, especially when I'm coming across bigger gaps and everything. If my material is not just absolutely perfect or if the gap is any bigger than the filler metal that I'm using, then I usually have a hard time figuring it out. And I haven't quite found the patience or the technique to get those bigger gaps figured out yet. Regardless, I've got enough weld all the way around this thing. Some of them are really pretty. Some of them are a lot less aesthetically pleasing, but I will say that there is a enough weld on here that we can go ahead and at least mock up where the part's going to end up going or at least where the condenser unit's going to sit. I'm probably going to modify this down the road a little bit. It's not too shabby, not too shabby. This unit really isn't that heavy. I was able to pick it up and put it on here without blowing my back out, so it wasn't too bad. I think this is going to be sturdy enough and not too shabby for just some spare parts. We didn't weld everything because of my precision fabrication wasn't very precise and you don't really laser weld big gaps very easily. But we got enough on there that we have our base on here. I might want to add something to fasten it to it. Uh, I'm probably put some weight or maybe even bury these legs so where it really won't go anywhere. I'd like to maybe add some shelter. They definitely recommend covering this if you can. I can also move this. It's a big deal for me. I can move this around a little bit. 
uh, and then it got plenty of space off the wall. I went ahead and took this little panel off. It had a little drain plug in there and it recommended me go to the bottom of this old dog and place that thing in. I'm not gonna lie, the instructions to this thing are really tough to follow for me. There's like way more words than needed. But we put the plug in and then we connected the two lines. It literally had like two pages to connect from there to there. Made sure they fit, made sure we didn't cross thread anything, fit everything nice and snug. And at the very end of those, there was some caps that you just went ahead and would unscrew to reveal a set screw. That set screw you can go ahead and crack open all the way counterclockwise, get the coolant flowing in. Once I heard that there was something flowing into these lines, I definitely wanted to start checking for leaks at that point. So I sprayed the soapy water over all of our fittings, including up here. Once I saw that there was no bubbles coming up from any leaking, went ahead and wrapped that insulation that it asked me to do earlier. Also attached the drain hose extension and we've got our cord out of here. So basically the three parts that came from the inside, they're coming to the outside at this point. We've got our drain. This is probably just going to go lay somewhere out of the way and organized. And then of course we got our wire. I want to make sure that everything runs first. So now I got to got to figure out how to do this electrical stuff. From what I can see and what I got, I've got to go to the big box store and grab wire and grab maybe a breaker, flexible conduit and cable to run out and go to my box in order to hook up the electrical. Still hot, it's getting a little later in the day, a little cloud cover, staying hydrated, still feeling good. Got a little groggy at one point, just took a break, some water, and get back at it. That's all you can do, pitter patter, get at her. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm not an electrician whatsoever. I never really pretend to be one, but we're going to have to do it anyway because hiring one's going to be pretty expensive. It was already kind of expensive just running to the big box store. I spent about 100 bucks. I had to get a 20 amp single pole breaker. I've got this flexible conduit with some 10-2 wire. This is the proper gauge wire that we want to run. And I got a couple connectors because this didn't have any connectors on it. I went ahead and trimmed back what we're going to need for the box. I would imagine that Mr. Cool didn't put it in the actual... DIY kit because they don't know exactly what your setup is. Because my box is inside, I'm gonna end up using the hole that's already there and run it up from the box out and then just kind of run it with everything else. Let's start by going over to the box. The 100 amp breaker, it's turned off, so there's no power in my shop right now. I did go ahead and feed all of that extra line, all that conduit up from the top. In these boxes, there's these little breakaway bits that you can pop out. Uh, and that's where that little quick connect will sit in. And we trend back quite a bit because as you can see, we need a little bit of space for all these to go. If you're intimidated by electrical work, I don't blame you. It really isn't that complicated. If we see where all the power is ran, we have our white, our red, and our black here. This is gonna be our white cable bar right here, and then this is gonna be our green one. Now, remember, I'm not a freaking electrician. I don't know, one of these is a neutral, one's the green is the ground, and the black is the hot, something like that. I think that's what they're called. I like colors, and that's why I'm happy that they color code stuff, so it should be pretty easy. All we gotta do is have enough cable for this to reach around. I'm gonna loosen up one of these spots, stab that guy in there, make sure that wire falls in that little groove. I might give it a little bit of a pull test. And that's when I kind of dress the wires, get them up out of the way. Then we'll run this white one down behind, open up a spot for it down yonder. Go ahead and torque her down. Got a little extra line there that needed, but I'm gonna open this up. It'll have a little spot for you to hook in there. And I do recommend taking this screw as far all the way out as you can. If you put like a little arch in there, you can kind of hook it around and get as much as that exposed wire as possible. And then we can set it in with the rest of them. I'm pretty sure you just push it. Oh, don't break that. Don't do that. Cut. So after almost breaking it again, they're not the same. This one, see how easy that pops in and out? These are not the same. I'll be right back, I gotta go back to the store. All right, back from a quick trip to the store again. This one was actually cheaper. Needed an Annie insta instead of an Audi. But now that we got the right breaker, another good reason why they probably didn't include one of these in the actual kit, because they don't know what you got. It does come with that wire that runs to the unit from the condenser, which will wire that in the opposite side of this guy. Give it the old pull test there. Make sure I put this in the right spot. Ha! Ha! Who would have thought if you just put the right guy on there, it'd work just fine. I'm gonna leave that breaker off. Still not gonna run 
turn the power on, but we're gonna go outside to the other end and get that side wired up. So I've got the flexible conduit coming out the back. I've got the line from the condenser to inside. It's going in the left side of this and I've got the other line going into the right side of this. Luckily for us, they kind of welder proofed everything. We've got our ground on this side. So we'll go ahead and we'll put it off to the side here. Tighten it down. God, I need that flathead. And then our neutral is going to be our white line. Get it nice and tight. And then our load's gonna be our black wire here. Labels are important. Tightened in. And then we have these three bits here. This green line, we can run to this little green screw. Let me put this little guy in there. And then you'll notice that this has colors and of course they've got numbers. So this one cord here, we're gonna put under the one. Black one says three. So we'll put that under three. And this white says two. Get that one in. All right, now we got everything wired in. We're gonna clean up this panel a little bit and then screw it back on. And then I think we can turn, turn it all on and see if, it, see if it works, fingers crossed. All right, so this is gonna be the moment of truth here. All I've done is hooked everything up, I think the way it should be hooked up. Put some fresh batteries in the remote. I don't know, I felt like it, was, it wasn't like easy, but it wasn't hard. I don't wanna turn it on. Hey, something beat. Something did be, oh sh There's a spark right there. And stand by, stand by. And just as I thought it was my own fault, I didn't have the neutral on the panel tight enough. Power's on right away. Set the cool. Oh, there it is. This is glorious. It's glorious. This is genuine. Genuinely happy. Bask in it. Now that the air is flowing, I went and buttoned up the box over there, got the cover back on it, and went back outside and started taping the non-adhesive tape along with some electrical tape, getting everything nice and tight as I worked from the top all the way down to where everything really started kind of getting out of hand where I couldn't really grip it any tighter. They did provide a lot of coverings to cover up some of those parts. I was more exclusively worried about the hole at the top. There's still a lot of stuff in my shop that I'd like to finish, including the insulation, a couple of the holes that I've already drilled into it because I didn't have to worry about keeping it cool or keeping it heated. But not to take away from the main bulk of this video, which is getting too hot, overworking yourself. If you feel like you're getting dizzy, you're getting drowsy, there are ways that you can prevent that by staying hydrated. You could also pour water on your wrists, keep cool rags, keep long sleeves and everything, keep your sweat sweating. If you realize you are not sweating anymore, you are in danger zone. You need to get to a nice, cool, shaded place and start drinking water. It can literally kill you. That being in mind, I'm super thankful that I've got a nice cool spray. It's only been on for maybe 15 minutes with that fan rolling in here. It's gotta be at least 20 degrees cooler than it is outside. Whew. We'll see you guys on the next one.